Hello, today I'm going to chat with you about how we set up master data for Abbey Flexi Capture for invoices. Now, master data is a very, very important step in the process, is in the implementation process. And the reason for that is because the master data actually helps us recognize information on the invoice, makes the, the recognition quality much higher, and the better we do it, and the better we prep for it, the better the outcome will be. So we, we're gonna take this time and chat a little bit about it. Now, what I have in front of me is, uh, is a database, and this can be any database. This is in SQL, but it can be an Oracle, can even be an Access or any ODBC compliant database. But within the database, we have our master data. And master data consists of things like business units, cost centers, GL codes, uh, purchase orders or purchase order line items, as well as vendor. Now, if we take a peek at the columns uh, here, you can kind of see the information we expect to receive for vendor. Now, because this is a demo system, the information we have is, is actually quite basic. But uh, for vendors, we can have like multiple addresses, multiple states, uh, multiple names, different, uh, different codes and such that we reference them by. Um, with our POs and line items, we have our PO header information, which is pretty pretty normal. Uh, typically, a PO number, who the vendor is, and then how much that uh, PO is for. And then we have our line items, of course, which get a little bit more technical, which are, you know, what the article number is, the quantities, the unit price, etc. So those would be the POs. We have our GL codes. Uh, GL codes um, are you know, just our expense uh, account codes, so we can reference those as any way that we want. Um, but in this case, in my sample here, you can see I just have a GL code column, an ID column, of course, and then a description column. Cost centers are kind of very similar layout where we have a cost center name and then what business unit that goes to. And then, of course, we have a business unit table, which has... Um, you know, business unit uh, name, where they are, the addresses are, and things. And here's a good example where we can have multiple names and addresses uh, in states and cities uh, for, for one record. And I'll just take a peek at that here to show you what the data looks like. So this is what we call master data. This is very, very important to have prepared before an implementation. It makes our implementation go very, very smoothly. So what we're going to do is set up a brand new Flexi Capture for Invoices project. We're going to just go ahead and start our new project, and we will call uh, we'll call this an invoices project, and we'll go ahead and just create a new folder on our desktop. Call it US Invoices, and we'll call this our US Invoices project. So what's going to happen now, of course, is the project um, setup is going to be created by default for the invoices project. It's going to create that project for us, and once this is done, we're going to go set up the master data. Okay, now that the project has been completed, we'll close that. And of course, on an invoices project, we already have a document definition created for us. So what we will do is we will go into that invoice uh, document definition, and it uh, opened on my other screen here, so I'm going to drag this over for us to review. And of course, we have our typical out-of-the-box fields here, which we're not going to study too much um, in this uh, demo, but uh, we can definitely reference those in other videos and, and through demos, personal demos with you. But in order to update the master data or even to set up the master data, we would go to Document defin Definition and then, of course, go to the Properties. From here, we're going to populate those data sets. Now, each one of these data, excuse me, data sets are the data sets that you saw me have in my master data table in SQL, which again can be in any database format. Um, but in this case, we're going to set up these to reference the database that I showed you earlier. So we're going to simply do setup. And then here we're we need to specify the connection string. You can see by default there is not one specified. So we're going to set this up. Of course, I know that we're talking to SQL. And I'm just going to set this up to be used um, for my well, personal database here. And we know that this is the database. Of course, we always want to test to make sure that works correctly. And then now knowing that that works correctly, we can go ahead and proceed. Okay, now that we can proceed, what we need to do is determine the schema. In this case, we'll just go ahead and all. Um, and of course, in your environment, you would want to determine what schema is best. And then of course, we need to determine what table the business unit information is derived from. In this case, we will say business unit table. Now what we'll do is we'll match the fields. So we need to obviously match the fields in this data set for every one of those columns that we have 
uh, in, in SQL, in the SQL table that I showed you. So we're going to say that the column ID within FlexiCapture should map to this field called ID in SQL. And it's very, very simple. And you can kind of see once you map it, it looks like, you know, you can kind of see where it says it's found, whether or not it's normalized, et cetera, and what the external database column is. So we will want to do that for every single one of these. Uh, I do want to show you this. Now, if we have a, a column, and for this example, we have name. But if we have a column that would have maybe reference in multiple columns, um, like a name one, a name two, a name three, or sometimes an address, that's an address one, two, and three, you can use what we call several columns. Within several columns, you can drag which columns make up the name field. Um, so we can actually reference all of those. Same thing with street. Street is a very common one where we would reference every one of those. And then, of course, I'm just going to go ahead and map these. For us, and then we'll do state as well. Zip code. Oop. There are multiple zip codes, so we will go ahead and use several columns for that. If there's a country code associated with it, we will do that. And then, of course, if, if there's a value added tax ID, uh, we will do that as well. If for some reason one of these columns is not uh, associated with what you want to do, which for US, we may not be using a uh, value added tax, but of course for other countries, especially European countries, we would. But if we do not want to use that column, we can simply tell the software that that is not used and then hit OK. Of course, within this screen, you have the ability to do a few things. You can tell Abby how often to update from that data set, uh, if, whether or not the operator doing verification can add or edit records. For this demo, I'm going to leave those blanks, but it, it would be something that you'd want to consider before uh, processing invoices. So once that's set up, you can see here we have a, what we call a connected field. And it's obviously connected, but we still have no records. All we need to do to update the records is hit Update. And when we do that, you should see our record count increases. So if we go look at our business units table here in SQL, you can see we have 12 records. And now within Abbey FlexiCapture, we have 12 records as well. So we will do the same setup for every one of these tables here. And it actually is a very quick process. Um, you specify um, what you want the data to come from. Um, in this case, we'll just kind of keep this easy. And, And we are working on the vendor. And so, whoops, I hit the wrong fields here. So we will just set up the ID column, the name, the street. The street we are not using, so we will just tell the software not to use it. The city. The state. The zip code. country code. If there's a business unit associated with it, which I don't think we're using in this case, so we will say no. And if there's a value added tax field, which I think, again, we will say no, we can move on. Now we can add fields here if you want to reference information from the data set besides what are shown here. Um, but in this case, we're going to leave it out of the box. So once again, I set that up. All I need to do is update it. You'll see now that I have three records, and that is also what I have in my database. So we'll quickly set up the purchase orders. as well. Oops. You can see here it's a very easy mapping session. All we need to do is map them. And move on. Of course, after we map, and you can see it's connected, then we will want to update. And you can see there we have those items set up.
This is a very nice, simple process here where we just do that mapping. Oops, I think I missed one here, description. Once again, you're just mapping the Flexi Capture field to the field in the database. Very, very simple. Some of these fields I know are not used, so we're going to go ahead and skip them. Okay, very good. And of course, once we do that, we need to update. And the same process for GL codes and cost centers. We're not going to do that on the demo today because I think you understand now that the process is very simple. We just need to set up um, the, the source, where it comes from, and then, of course, ma make sure it's connected. And then when we're connected, we just need to update. So um, it's very, very simple. Now that we have the data sets defined, um, that's kind of the core step in setting up an invoices project. So we can save the document definition. And even from here, we can run a test batch uh, for those vendors. And we'll actually go ahead and do that. Go ahead and create a test batch. We'll load some images here just to do our testing. see that it, the process will uh, begin to do the recognition and then the software will tell us when it's done and there it's complete we can open it and the very important part here is that we determine the vendor now once again that's always set up which is an out-of-the-box uh, project that we set up so it's not set up to detect line items and those things yet but uh, we can obviously do that through the properties in the project we'll just load a couple other ones here to prove that those vendors are set up and that we're detecting the vendor. If we get a vendor in this slot over here, that's kind of the secret key to know that we detected it. So we just loaded a couple other ones. We just want to make sure that we found the vendor here. And then once again, we can look at that information for the vendor. This information just comes directly from the data set that we just populated. And then of course our last one and we have our vendor there. So that is a video of how you set up master data for an invoices project. It is actually a very simple process once we have the data uh, in, a, in a location that is easy for us to reference, use, and, and adapt into the software. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you run into any struggles with this, please let us know. We're very, very comfortable with this process and would love to help you out. Thank you so much.